MediaTek has been focusing only on lower and mid-range processors for quite some time, but now this is going to change with its first ever 5G integrated flagship processor. With this processor, MediaTek will be able to compete against Exynos, Snapdragon and High Silicon flagship SoCs. MediaTek calls it Dimensity 1000 5G and is the first SoC of the lineup. The Dimensity name is intended to distinguish MediaTek's 5G chip family from the Helio series of 4G SoCs. According to MediaTek, Dimensity represents a step towards a new era of mobility, the fifth dimension, to spur industry innovations and let consumers unlock the possibility of 5G connectivity. Now it's got leading edge CPU, GPU, it's got integrated 5G and the media stuff. So now let's have a look. The chipset is built on the 7 nanometer process and is coupled with A77 architecture and on top of that it has integrated 5G making it very power efficient. It has octa-core CPU while the core configuration of the SoC is interesting as it's a 4 plus 4 configuration. Samsung and Huawei's high silicon both have a 2 plus 2 plus 4 configuration in the Exynos 990 and the Kirin 990. On the other hand, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 has 1 plus 3 plus 4 CPU core configuration. MediaTek has thus opted not to have any medium core as all 4 A77 cores will be clocked at 2.6 GHz. The rest of the 4 low powered A55 cores are clocked at 2 GHz. The SoC employs a new Mali G77 GPU in an MP9 configuration. This setup is 19% smaller than the MP11 in the Exynos 990. And MediaTek also doesn't disclose any clock frequencies, so the end performance likely isn't fully determined yet. Nevertheless, it's a very competitive GPU configuration. In terms of memory specifications, MediaTek SoC supports 4-channel LPDDR4X memory with a maximum of up to 16 GB RAM. The company is also promoting its third-generation AI processing unit for on-device AI operations, which has more than double the performance of MediaTek's previous APU. It has two big cores, three little cores, and one tiny core. MediaTek fully supports the NNAPI features, while its competitors have incomplete support, which helps its position in AI benchmarks. As for displays, it has support for Full HD+, 1080p panels at up to 120Hz and 2K+, 1440p panel at up to 90Hz. ISP capabilities has been improved and the new SoC will support camera sensors with resolution of up to 80 megapixels at 24 frames per second or multi-camera setups with 32 plus 16 megapixel sensors. Media encoding capabilities fall in at 4K at 60 frames per second. But here, the biggest surprise lies in the chipset's support for AV1 video decoding. As far as we are aware, this makes the Dimensity 1000 the very first consumer mobile SoC to support the format, which is a great leap forward in terms of future-proofing the device which are based on the new chipset. Now coming to connectivity, the chipset supports sub 6 GHz 5G while support for millimeter wave that is mm wave 5G is absent. This doesn't matter as much as it seems because mm wave 5G is only a reality in the US for now. The majority of the world's market have chosen to go with sub 6 GHz 5G in the form of mid band and low band. MediaTek specifically notes that the Dimensity 1000 is designed for global sub-6 GHz networks that are launching in Asia, North America and Europe. The new chipset supports 5G2 carrier aggregation and is the first to support dual 5G SIM. It's capable of up to 4.7 Gbps downloads and 2.5 Gbps uploads over 5G frequency over 6 GHz. Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1 Plus standards are supported from the start. The chip supports standalone and non-standalone sub-6 GHz networks and it includes multi-mode support for every cellular connectivity generation from 2G to 5G. The last time MediaTek competed in the flagship SoC space, it didn't end well. 
The company's flagship Helio X10 and X20 SoCs suffered from inferior performance and efficiency when compared to Qualcomm's chipset. The Helio X30 was made for 2017 flagships, but it only found its way to two phones. As MediaTek vacated the high-end space in 2018, competition in the SoC industry was reduced. And now it's making a comeback, probably we might get to see this in the upcoming Redmi K30 Pro. And with this, we come to an end of the video. Feel free to subscribe, comment and like. Peace out.